Now, every time we add something like this to the keel, you know, one of these giant members, it just shocks me how massive this project is. And, you know, I kind of scratch my head and say, what the hell have I got myself into? But um, it, that was a good day. down too much in perfection but I want this angle to line up here at the stem so that um, we get as much surface contact as we can not relying you know on a gap filling adhesive um, so we're just trying to you know smooth it up uh, using our level and um, our combination square just to make sure that we're square and that we're straight and you know this goes to a comment I believe it was a YouTube comment which would jog my memory about uh, running a string line down the um, down the boat from the stem to the transom uh, and it is in George's book, but to be honest, I forgot about it. Um, but so before we start setting frames, we really need that string line in place because once that string line is in place, we can hang plumb bobs off of it. And obviously the plumb bob should hit in the middle of the uh, keel, uh, both of, on the frames, the, um, the bottom uh, frame section should sit on the rabbit and then it should be plumb. Now, if all those three conditions are met, then our frames are in the right place. But in order to do that, we need to have the stem in place so we can run that string. So that's what we're getting at today. So we're going to do the same thing here that we did uh, on the transom knee, and that is to uh, set some stop blocks. We're going to put a couple screws uh, in the sides on each side to, to be our clamp to hold things in place. But the stop blocks are critical because uh, once you put the epoxy on, this thing starts sliding around like crazy. Since I made everything oversized, um, I had to kind of use the clamp with some shims just to make sure uh, it holds it in place. Now, um, I'm just using, uh, I think what the Air Force called a Mark I eyeball to line up our reveals to make sure that they're even. We'll pull all these out once the uh, screws are in, because obviously the shims would glue to that if we left them.
So we got that stop lock removed. Obviously, we don't want to have that accidentally get glued to the keel. Uh, once these uh, screws were in place, holding everything in position, we could remove that. Now, these screws are just temporary. These are just here to act as clamps until the epoxy sets up. And another nice feature of epoxy, you don't need crazy clamping pressure. Just moderate clamping pressure will do. Screws are more than adequate. Um, if something terrible happens and they break off and we can't get them out, these are coated, so they shouldn't have any uh, negative effect on the keel, you know, years down the road. And then, just like everything on this, we don't trust any glue joint unless it has a bolt through it. So this uh, situation will be no different. And the keel portion here will get three bolts here. And then for the stem portion, we'll get three bolts additionally. So that should make for a very solid assembly. This is the area we're working on right now. Um, I don't know what this piece is called here, but it's where the bow stem meets the keel. And from the uh, just the underside of the knee to the bottom of the keel, it, that mark right there is three inches. So we just uh, measured down, uh, struck a level line across both sides to make sure we're nice and even. And then we'll come back in with our turbo plane um, on our angle grinder and hog out most of that material uh, to get that transition. Now it'll be a rough transition and we'll come back later and smooth it up uh, with you know some sanding and whatnot. And if you'll notice, this is a very simple butt joint where the stem connects to the keel. Um, you know, there's no rabbit, there's no half lap, it's just but a butt joint. So uh, simple and attachment because we're going to use our big 5 8 inch bolts and epoxy to hold things in place but the problem is, is that our uh, bow stem is about 300 pounds of laminated white oak and it's going to be very challenging to hold that uh, big old bow stem in position uh, while we carefully drill holes for our bolts and you know hold things together for the epoxy and the screws and stuff so we're going to need to build some kind of support system that comes off the bottom here and temporarily will hold that bow stem in position until things get all set up so that's going to be our challenge for today. Switching to the uh, sander attachment. This thing is a beast too. So we got our three holes drilled for the uh, stem knee here, that uh, for the bolts that attach to the keel. Um, we countersunk on both sides, the top and the bottom, particularly on the top here for this angle. We wanted to make a flat spot for the washers to lay flat. And then we coated the insides of the uh, holes with some copper preservative. And now we're just coating the bolts with some beeswax to make them slide in a little easier. And as we found that uh, using two bolts uh, to pound in, Makes it, uh, the, protects the threads a little bit better. If you just put one bolt on, you may uh, damage the threads. Um, ask me how I know. That's really nice. Just got a few threads, you know, enough threads to get a nut on nice and neat. And plenty of thread on top.
we're just springing a, a batten here to uh, mark where the rabbit is for the stem. We're going to have to work out a plan to replicate this on the other side. That's probably going to involve building another pattern. Since I don't really know the angle of how the planking is going to meet um, at the stem here, I'm going to uh, run some curves with the saw blade, just some straight lines, progressively shallower, and then we'll come back and clean it out with um, with the chisel. Uh, again, you know, like we've done for other things, we want to try to hog out as much material while we can while it's laying flat like this. It'll be a lot easier to do it now than when it's up on the keel. So uh, we're just going to make a pattern up now to uh, do the mirror image on the other side of the stem. So we'll make up a pattern with this Luan, uh, some hot glue gun and some staples, then we'll flip the stem over and uh, do the layout on the other side and do the same thing. Now, you want, should I just try to pick it up and walk no, it towards well, you? I'll help you pick it up, push it down here, and then we get it and then spin it. Okay. All right, wait a second. Okay, I got this. Okay. I got it. You got it? Mm -hmm. Swinging? Yep, Up there. Okay, it's off the ground. Okay. Wanted to put a step later. That cost me. <laughs> Your measurements might be just about perfect. David. All right, because we still got to apply the glue, so this is kind of a, I mean, we're not going to lower it down, but mm -hmm. if you just let go, what happens if you just let go? Slowly but surely. Which way? Plum. That's 
Yep. Is that good? Uh, no, it's got to go a little bit more to south. Okay. Right there. I think it's perfect. But... Oh, fuck. That's perfect. perfect. It's just because I, I didn't center... Uh this one that good so I've only got a little bit of clamp on this block And that's going to do it for this episode that went surprisingly well I'm, I'm shocked at how smoothly it went we're going to leave the chain fall and the rigging in place until the epoxy sets up. And then once it cures, we'll come in and we'll install our through bolts. Um, there's no sense in taking uh, the rigging off now uh, and risk, you know, knocking things out of alignment. So once that's all set, then we can install our through bolts just like we've done everywhere else. So that'll be no problem. And then now with the bow stem and the transom in place, we can run a string line down the center of the building here that when, as we install the frames, we can hang a, a plumb bob off that string line to make sure our frames are setting where they should, make sure there's no curve in the keel. I mean, to my eyeball, everything looks really, really nice right now, but that string line will confirm it. Um, we also want to thank people who uh, purchased a challenge coin from the SV Seeker uh, junk store. Uh, last month, uh, the challenge coin sales brought in nearly $1,000 to the project. And, you know, for a small budget project like us, $1,000 is a huge windfall. And we are so thankful to everyone who took part in that. Uh, we'll put a link in the description uh, that'll take you over to the SV Seeker junk store and the challenge coins. And, you know, you can check them out. And, you know, if you're interested, you can purchase one. We don't talk about money here very often. You know, we don't have a patron account. We don't ask people to contribute that often. Um, but, you know, we feel very comfortable with the Challenge Coin project that, you know, you get something, we get something, we're and very happy to be a part of it. And, you know, to Doug and Betsy, I mean, who does this? So generous, so gracious to take on this project for all the uh, YouTube bow builders. I mean, you can't imagine the amount of work and shipping that goes into making this happen. So, I mean, many thanks to them, and we're so appreciative to them. So while you're over at that junk store, you know, please pick up something else from for their project to help support them as well. Um, you can leave a comment below, or if you're in upstate New York and you'd like to come check out the project, you can send us an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. We'll set up a time. You can come take a walk around. Maybe you got some tips for me. Uh, you can go over to our website at www.cdreamerproject.com, and you can see everything that we've done to get us to this point in the build. You can see how we built this building. You can see how much money we've spent so far. Uh, there's a lot of information and pictures over there. So as always, like, subscribe, and share. We'll see See you next time.